turns out there's a lot of opinions on how to type your functions in TypeScript, and it turns out a lot of those opinions are wrong. This convo has been fun, but it's time to end it. Let's talk about why you should avoid return types when you're able to. In this example, we have a result type. The result is the thing we get back from this function. A result has a status, which is either okay or error, and it has a value or an error if the status is error. In this contrived inferred example, we're not passing a return type, which means this type isn't being used. And the result is that the type that we get back has a value that is either string or undefined. Even if we check and confirm status is okay, what we're getting back here is this weird tuple of status string value string error undefined or status string error error value undefined. And that's not a great representation of the types going on here. If we give this a strict type by putting a type definition at the end of the function def, like I have here, then we'll see with this contrived example, we now know confidently that value is string after confirming the status is okay. This seems like a pretty obvious, compelling example of when you would want to use return types, right? I told you we could do better because I think we can. This next example is using as const because in this example, there is a set of values that are and aren't valid. And as const basically tells TypeScript, don't treat the things in here as strings, treat them as constants. You'll notice we get something even more strict that's interesting. We get back yay. Why are we getting back yay here? Well, the only two things this can actually return are status okay value yay or status error, error, error. Because of that, the true type of this function is status okay value yay or status error, error, new error. And when you use as const with inference without the type definition, you're guaranteed the correct result, like the exact correct result, the actual truth of what's being done and being returned. Funny enough, if you add back the return type on here, it actually overrides the truth with a more vague result. And you'll see here, and space this far enough, that the result now is that value is string, even though we know value is yay, because the as const gets overridden by the thing you put here. If you all know anything about me, you know I love diagrams. So obviously I was gonna throw this in a diagram. I have a key here with the four things that will be visible in any given piece. I drew a circle, which is all the potential types we could reasonably think result might be. It's our goal as developers to narrow that type definition down to its very core of the truth. So in this diagram, I have the potential as a black circle on the outside, and I have the truth as this little green circle on the inside. We're trying to figure out how these different solutions relate to the truth. If we take the same code, the result of values type is yay. The raw inference does not give us yay. It doesn't even give us string. It gives us string or undefined, which means the types that it could potentially be are large. Return types narrow it slightly, as we see here, because return type knows it has to be a string. So in this case, the type is more narrowed. It's closer to the truth. And then we have in the center here, const yay, because if you as const these with const inference, the result is the exact truth, the exact thing that we're getting back here, guaranteed. Thankfully, in this example, all of the different options contain the truth, which means we're bickering over the scope of what exists outside of the truth here. And I understand, I can totally see why people would not want this area to exist, and if they could avoid it, would choose to. But what if I told you it wasn't that simple? What if I told you return types can lie? I think lies are the root of all evil in type systems. I prefer vagueness to not telling the truth. And with inference, you can't lie. With return types, it's trivial to lie. And it's even pretty easy to accidentally let lies slip through code review. The first example I have here comes Credit Julius, one of the lead maintainers and creators of Create T3 app. Julius made an example that comes close to my heart because I've made mistakes like this before, where you have a user type that has a username and email, and notably it doesn't have a password because this is meant to be the user that we return to a, a user when they make a request on our application. However, if we have a function get user that returns things that it shouldn't, like in this case, a password, this type is not representative of what this function returns. And if we don't give this function a type and we call it, and we get the response, we see the inferred responses, or we see that the type that we get back is correct. It's username, email, and password. It knows that we have the password here because we returned it. So obviously that's going to appear in the typed result. Sadly, it's very easy for strict typed returns to override that result. So in this case, with get user strict, we have a return type of user, which only has a username and an email. So even though we are returning something with a password that we would 
want to see in our types definition, it's not there anymore. By putting this type here, we have overridden the type of this, or we have overridden the type such that password magically vanishes in TypeScript land, even though it's still there. That's a lie. This is an incorrect type definition. If we take a look at the diagram for this, it should highlight where the lies are happening. So we again have our black circle and the truth within it. The type of user.password when we call user is very different depending on which of these solutions we use to type it. The truth of what user.password is here is pass because that is what we're getting back when we call user.password. If we use raw inference, we're gonna get back a string, which is fine. It lets us know that we have a string there when we don't intend to and that the return or the response of get user has a password in it. So it's still correct, it just has more vagueness around what the type is because it's a generic string, not the specific string. Totally fine. The return type will actually give you an error here. When you try to touch, check, or interface with user.password, it will error because you've told TypeScript, no, that doesn't exist, even though it does. The return type is now giving you an error on data that actually exists, and you have all of the things to know that that data exists. If you ask const it, you're gonna get pass because that's what the value is here and it's now been made into a constant. But the harsh reality here is that all of these are the truth except for return types. Because return types here contain some of the truth but are also missing some of it, they're lying. A lie is when you don't include the truth in your response. And that is what I see here when you use return types. It becomes much easier to lie. And that's a huge concern to me. We can negotiate and argue all day around the merits of making your type definition closer to the truth, but we also have to acknowledge that return types allow you to move the type further away from the truth and outside of the scope of truth. Very scary. For my final example, I wanna show the code that Primogen gave an example with on stream yesterday, because although it looks good on the stream, we later figured out it's entirely broken and super risky. So much so that Prime even replied earlier today saying, I showed overloading lying, which it does, and TypeScript should get rid of that behavior immediately. Well, TypeScript behaves how TypeScript behaves, and right now, return types enable TypeScript to lie a lot. In this example, we have a type user, which has a role, either user or admin. We call this get user function. I need to get user overrides because this is the one where we're overriding it. We call it with an ID, and we call it with a role. We then return that role. Ideally, we'd probably return other things here like permissions and stuff, but the example is meant to be simple where role is user, we get back role user. Role is admin, we get back role admin. The override here is basically telling TypeScript, oh, by the way, if you pass this, you're guaranteed this subset of the type because get user overrides always returns a user and both of these are valid users. So what we've effectively said here is if the input matches this type, then the response has to match this type. I don't know how closely you've been looking, but that's not the truth here. Because if role is user, we're not returning role user, we're actually returning role admin. If you didn't notice that, then you would have failed this in code review. Because guess what? The types are lying here. <laughs> if we look at user override, the response to get user override with user, it thinks the type of is role user, but it isn't. We have just used the override here to lie to TypeScript. Because we told TypeScript, no, you don't know better about our types, we know better about our types but we don't here, we were wrong. And a code review is the only way you're not gonna ship this code. However, if you just let inference do its thing, you're going to get a more vague type, sure. It's not ideal, I understand. But in this case, this more vague type of string or null is the truth. And I personally believe truthy code is more valuable than slightly more narrow type definitions. If we take a look on the diagram here, you'll see why this one's so scary. The truth is role admin. And sadly, even with the consts, we can't narrow it down to here without the possibility of lying. The raw inference would be role string or null, which is pretty accurate, totally fine to operate within. The override return type, so if you're using overrides for the return type on this, it's now gonna be role colon user, which is a lie. If we ask const everything, we're gonna get back role user or role admin or null because it knows strictly what these are. It doesn't necessarily know the mapping of when you pass a specific role, which thing comes back. That all said, God, uh, override return types just don't exist within the truth at all in this case. You'd have to actually modify the code to bring these back to the truth and then all future code modifications have to be cognizant of the fact that this type may not overlap with the truth. And you as a developer have to be very, very proactive to make sure that happens. Or, way easier, 
just don't give it a type. The vast majority of the time, if you don't type the response of the function, the type you get back is good enough to work with. And on the rare occasions it isn't, you can as const and move on. If you really want this function of a specific narrowed down type, you better put a massive comment on it, letting future developers know that it's easy to lie if they aren't careful. Once we get into any, this becomes way more common, but even in these simple use cases where all of the inputs and outputs are strictly typed, return types often lie to you. So be careful. Don't use return types if you don't have to. I don't think they're 100% evil. I think they're closer to like 20%. I just wish we would acknowledge that 20% evil and be very, very careful about how we introduce evil into our code bases. Inference always tells the truth, even if the truth is more vague. Return types can lie to you, and you should be careful when you use them. As good as I am at TypeScript, I relied on much smarter people to help build this stance and also find all of these examples. So I'm gonna let all of them let you know what they think. Hey, I'm Malta, and I prefer inferred return types. I'm Trash, and I generally prefer inferring my return types. Hey, I'm Ben, and for strong, intuitive, safe typing, I try to default to inference in TypeScript. Hi, my name is Josh Goldberg, and I generally prefer inferring return types. Hey, I'm Dax, and I prefer inferring return types. Hi, I'm Maple Leaf. And I prefer inferring return types. Hey, I'm Alex, and I almost always infer types. Hi there, I'm Tanner Lindsley, and the vast majority of the time, I use inferred return types. Hi, I'm Kent C. Dons, and although I don't like hard and fast rules, most of the time, I infer my return types. Hi, I'm Matt Pocock. I think you should be using inferred return types by default, except when you have a function with multiple branches, except in library code, and except when you have really niche, weird performance concerns with the TypeScript compiler, where a return type solves it. But that's it. By default, use implicit returns. Hopefully we can end this conversation once and for all. If you want to know more about ways people use TypeScript wrong, I'm going to pin a video right there. So take a watch of that one. Should be good. Peace, nerds.